Hello everyone. On this video we will be looking at how to add and subtract mixed numbers when they have the same denominator. Alright, so remember, this is something that's going to be important for some problems, that mixed numbers are just two values added together. Two and one half is really just two plus one half. So visually it's one whole shaded section and one whole shaded section plus half a shaded section. All right, so let's look at the steps involved in adding or subtracting your mixed numbers. Okay, so first you want to rewrite the problem vertically. Okay, that means one on top of the other. Second, you want to either add or subtract your whole numbers and then add and subtract your fractions. Okay, so you may have to rewrite your mixed number in some of the borrowing problems. Okay, and I'll give you examples of how to do that and when, what to look for. Okay, and third, you want to simplify your fractional part. That's if it's necessary. All right, so if you're still writing, by all means, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and jump into some of our examples. All right. So let's say, for example, we want to add uh -oh, three and one eighth. Plus two, uh oh, two and three eighths. Oh, I'm messing up. Two and three eighths. There we go. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, at least the first thing I do, is write it vertically. So you have three and one eighth plus two and three eighths. And this may not seem like a very important step on a problem like this, but when you get into some of your borrowing problems and your subtraction problems, it'll make a big difference. So this step, like I said, may not seem that important here. You may figure, okay, well, I can do that up here. You can, but in some problems, writing it vertically does make it a lot easier. All right, so we go ahead and we add our whole numbers. So 3 plus 2 is 5, and we have the same denominator, so you have 1 8 plus 3 eighths is just 4 eighths. So he has 1 plus 3 over 8. So that gives you 5 and 4 eighths. And remember that 4, 4 times 1, and 8 is 4 times 2. So that's 5 and 4 times 1 over 4 times 2, and anything divided by itself is just 1. So that leaves us with a final answer of 5 and 1 half. So it's pretty straightforward when it works out like that. All right, so let's say for our next, next example, I'll tell you what, I'll give you two examples. And I want you to solve both of them. I'll write out both of them. Okay, so what if we have 1 and 7 eighths minus 3 eighths? And what if we have 12 and 5 twelfths minus 7 and 1 twelfth? All right, so go ahead and press pause and try to solve both of those on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and you've solved both of these. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Now for three eighths, I'll write a little side note over here. Remember, 3 eighths is just 0 plus 3 eighths, 
which is 0 and 3 eighths. So if you wanted to, you could write a 0 there if you wanted to write it vertically. So you have 1 and 7 eighths minus, if you, like I said, if you want to put the 0 here, you can. You don't have to, but 0 and 3 eighths. And then you subtract. You have 1 minus 0, which is 1. Then you have 7 minus 3 all over your common denominator of 8, which is 1 and 4 8. And simplify it will give you 1 and 1 half as your final answer. All right, so let's go up to our next one. So you have 12 and 5 twelfths minus 7 and 1 half. Okay, so we have 12 minus 7, which is 5. Uh oh, that should be over 12. Okay, so since we have the same denominator, we have 5 minus 1 over that common denominator. So that gives us 5 and 4. Well, and simplify, because remember 4 is 4 times 1 and 12 is 4 times 3, and the 4s will cancel out. That gives us 5 and 1 third as our final problem, I mean final answer. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and look at a borrowing problem. Okay, so remember this is a problem where you would need to borrow. Okay, so let's say, for example, we have 10 minus. 5 and 2 sevenths. All right, so let's say instead of, well, we'll write it out the normal way, like we would do it before. This way you would know whether or not you have to borrow. So you have 10 minus 5 and 2 sevenths. Okay, so 10 minus 5 is 5. You have nothing minus 2 over 7. Okay, so here, in this case, you have no top fraction. Okay, so we just borrow, and I'll show you how to borrow. Okay, so 10, remember at the beginning when I said that you could rewrite a number when you're borrowing. What I mean by that is 10. We can rewrite that as 9 plus 1. So we're going to borrow 1. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have that numerator up here, a value that would have the same denominator. Since this denominator is 7, we can just turn that 1 into 7 over 7. So you have 9 plus 7 over 7. And we can just rewrite that as 9 and 7, 7. So remember, that's just 10. So 9 plus 1 is just 10. We just wrote it a different way. All right, so let's start over. And instead of 10, we'll make it 9 and 7, 7 minus 5 and 2, 7. It's still 10 minus 5 and 2 sevenths. We just wrote our 10 to look a little bit different. Okay, so you have 9 minus 5, which is 4. Now we can subtract. So you have our same denominator. So you have 7 minus 2 all over 7. Okay, and that gives us 4. 7 minus 2 is 5 all over 7, and it can't be simplified any more than that. So that is our final answer. All 
right? So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and do one more example. And again, this is a borrowing problem. Okay, so what if we have 8 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 3 fourths? Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause and try to solve this one on your own, knowing what you know about borrowing. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and you've worked this one out, or at least gave it a good try. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so we'll write it vertically, 8 and 1 4 minus 3 and 3 4. Okay, so the 8 minus 3 will give us 5, so that part is no problem. It's the 1 minus 3 over 4. Now, you can't do that because this part of it is not a positive number. You do 1 minus 3, we're going into negative numbers, and we don't want that. Not a positive number. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our numerator and our upper fraction a little bit bigger. And we're going to do that by borrowing. All right, so I'm going to show you how we're going to borrow. So we have 8 and 1 fourth. Okay, so really that's just 8 plus 1 fourth. But we want to borrow. So instead of 8 plus 1 fourth, we're going to have 7 plus 1 plus 1 fourth. Okay, it's still 8 and 1 fourth. This is our 8. This is our 1 fourth. We just kind of separated it. Okay, so now we're going to bring this and combine those two. So that's going to be 7 plus 1 and 1 fourth. And if we convert this to a mixed number, I mean, not mixed number, an improper fraction. It's already a mixed number. That gives us 7 and 5 fourths. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So 8 and 1 fourth is equal to 7 and 5 fourths. All right, so we're going to rewrite it using this in place of 8 and 5 fourths. Okay, so we're going to start over. We're going to cross that one out because we couldn't get anywhere with that one. So we have... Actually, I'll write it starting over. 8 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 3 fourths. That's just going to give us, because remember the 8 and 1 fourth is equal to 7 and 5 fourths. 7 and 5 fourths minus 3 and 3 fourths. All right, so now we go ahead and subtract. 7 minus 3 is 4. And you have 5 minus 3 over like denominators. So 5 minus 3 over 4. So that's 4 and 5 minus 3 is 2, 4 and 2 fourths. We simplify this because 2 is 2 times 1 and 4 is 2 times 2. That will give us 4 and 1 half as our final answer, our final simplified answer. All right, so that's how you would approach it if you had to borrow and you have the same denominator. All right, so hopefully this all made sense and I'll see you on the next video.